have to work very hard under intense pressure at times. And when we appear on the stage, I think we seem a little bit distant to many members of the public. When they meet us, they realize that we're just the same as anyone else. We're absolutely ordinary people with the same ambitions and uh, way of life. At times, we do let our hair down to uh, balance the uh, intense work. You may see that occasionally on this tour, perhaps, if you look in the correct places. <laughs> I think there are an awful lot of us that don't like rehearsing very much. Nine tenths of it is very boring. You don't rehearse inspiration and moment. You rehearse up bows and down bows and whether the tenth note along the line is a G sharp or a G natural and all those sort of tedious things. I suppose it's just like a typist typing a letter. It's not exactly an emotional experience. A lot of conductors do overdo it. They rehearse minute details so much that you just lose that idea of the whole sort of sweep of the music. I find that very frustrating. I just want to play, you know, I'm just... <laughs> We've had funny occasions. I remember once in uh, Copenhagen that we found that the orchestra was split into two hotels and half of them had been booked into what was literally a brothel. And some male members of the orchestra were actually propositioned. That was quite funny. And then another occasion we were traveling by rail, a long journey up through Germany, and several people decided to go and have lunch. And four people were left having lunch and the trains came to a station and split in half and the lunch wagon went off with, in the wrong direction. Four people got back to the concert with about five minutes to spare. In fact, I almost sort of longed for things to go wrong. I started playing professionally January 1948, which is nearly 40 years ago, isn't it? It'll be 40 years in January. It's too long, isn't it? <laughs> I need a change. <laughs> um, the reason I played the bass is um, going back to where I was born in Oban, Yorkshire, a little mining village, uh, when I was in my teens. My father, he was one of the old silent picture players, you know, he played the fiddle, he had his little band in, the, in over in Yorkshire, playing for the silent pictures, and the old boy that played the bit of a bass, he died, and his wife gave my father the bass. <laughs> so that's, that's really how I started playing the bass. Um, just to carry on the amateur shows back at home. I like the freedom of, uh, uh, you get up here in the north, I don't, I don't like the hustle and bustle, and, you know, in, of London. I did have a chance to go to Covent Garden a couple of times. Uh, many, many years ago, I was asked to go. And after a lot of consideration, I turned it down. and didn't go. I, I, uh, I felt happier up here. I, I like the family life and the freedom. Gloria a Cristo. When you're away, 
you do tend to sort of try and make the most of being in a foreign country, so you dash around and you look at all the things that you're supposed to look at. There's always little time for play on these trips. We get to uh, sample the, uh, the local cuisine and see some of the local sites, and we all get to know each other a little bit better. strains and tensions as you can imagine in any artistic organization but it's a very friendly orchestra Liverpool we get on very well together on the whole we get on very well with our conductors and there's a good atmosphere for making music <laughs> Priestley, I'm the principal cellist. I've been with the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic now for about six years. Being made a principal cellist is rather like being made a bishop. There are very few principal cellists in Britain, and if you get a principal cellist job, you must take it, even if it's perhaps in a part of the country that you would not ideally choose to live in. But I love London life very much. I love the musical life and the social life. Well, in London, you are as good as your last concert. You fight for every engagement. It's ruthless and cutthroat, and as long as you are delivering the goods, you have a secure job, and so on. But you always have this astringent sensation when you're performing, because you know it has to meet certain requirements. In the provinces, and particularly in Liverpool, there is, I think, a feeling that sometimes, well, if this was a concert at the Festival Hall, I'd perhaps be trying harder than if it was a concert in Blackburn or Preston. I think sometimes job security is too great. It can corrode standards, as well as being a, a comforting thing. Mm -hmm. 